it together instead, and uh, hopefully you'll get a really good sense of how a titration works. Um, interestingly, I will be holding the camera with one hand, so I'll be doing this titration with one hand. I hope it works out for us. So you can see all the equipment here that we're going to be using. Um, I have already cleaned out and filled the burette with the sodium hydroxide solution, the standard solution that we're going to be using. And our goal today is to figure out the molarity of acetic acid in white vinegar. Um, so we'll be doing a titration of the white vinegar, which is our analyte, and figuring out uh, what the concentration of acetic acid is in the white vinegar. So, um, like I said, I've already started, I've already filled up the uh, uh, burette. And so I'm gonna go ahead and show you uh, where it is right now. I'm holding a card behind it so you can see it better. Remember, you read from the bottom of the meniscus and an important part to realize about burettes is they read from the top down. So it starts at zero at the top and then it goes downward instead of upward like most devices we use. And uh, I'll go ahead and tell you the reading for this one. Uh, you're always gonna read to two decimals here because we're gonna estimate between the lines. And so from zero to one, you can see it's kind of halfway in between. And it looks like to me, it's probably about 0 0.49, 0 0.49 milliliters, uh, maybe 0 0.50 milliliters. So whichever one you think is, is closer, that's fine. Um, and from now on, you're gonna read this on your own when I show you. Uh, but I wanted to give you the first uh, reading to make sure you're on the right track. So we've got our initial reading and the liquid's gonna flow out of the bottom down here, uh, out of uh, this, uh, uh, the tip of the burette here. And I'll be turning the stopcock in order to dispense the sodium hydroxide into the, uh, into the uh, vinegar. All right, so we are going to get our vinegar uh, ready to be analyzed. I'm gonna go ahead and pour some vinegar into the speaker just so it's easier to pour. Um, and also, actually, we're gonna use volumetric pipette in order to draw out exactly 10 milliliters. All right, so this is a volumetric pipette. It measures one volume, 10 milliliters. And so you can see here it says 10 on there and there's a little line uh, right there. And so at that line, it's exactly 10 milliliters. So what I'm gonna do is I am gonna go ahead and use this um, little wheel here, which will draw the liquid up into the pipette. So if you watch, you can see the liquid is being drawn up into the pipette. And I'm gonna draw it up actually past the line. So you can see that I did draw it up past the line. And then there's a valve here. When I push this lever, it opens up the, um, the pipette and allows liquid to flow out. So I'm gonna let some flow out until it's exactly on the line for 10 milliliters. So I'm gonna go ahead and let that out until I get down to exactly the line for 10 milliliters. And so now I've measured out exactly 10 milliliters. So I'm gonna put that into my flask here dispense that. So I just push the little valve up here and that allows the liquid to flow out. And so it takes a little bit of time. You have to be a little patient. You can see it's flowing out of the pipette. And smells like vinegar. It's very exciting. All right. So I have dispensed the 10 milliliters of the acid. Um, I'm gonna put some water in here. It says 10 milliliters of water. It doesn't really matter how much water you add. The water is just giving me a little more liquid to work with. We're not gonna use that volume of water at all in this lab. It's just to allow us to swirl a little bit more liquid in there. Then the last thing I wanna do is I need to put my indicator in there so that I know when I reach the end point. So I'm gonna go ahead and put two drops of phenolphthalein. Remember, phenolphthalein is clear in acids and you can see that it is indeed clear in this acid. And so now we're gonna set up our titration. Now we want it to stir automatically so I don't have to stir it. So I'm gonna put a, a little um, uh, magnetic stir in there. And I did drop that a little hard. Again, working with one hand. And I'm gonna turn this on and get it, get it stirring gently. So as the base is dropping into the acid, uh, it will mix with that and neutralize uh, consistently. Okay, so now we're gonna use the stopcock to start adding the acid. 
I mean the base, into the acid. So here I go. I'm going to go ahead and turn that on. And you can see that it is starting to kind of, you see a little bit of pink developing, but it disappears immediately. So I'm just going to keep adding the base until I start seeing the pink disappear more slowly. Because right now, we have, if I stop the base from going in, there is more acid than base in there. So we still need to add more base to get to the end point, the point where the color change uh, remains, which is the equivalent point, the point where the amount of acid and the amount of base are equal to one another. So I'm gonna keep going. You can see the pink is developing, but it's still disappearing pretty quickly. I'm gonna stop and you can see the pink is gone. So I'm gonna keep adding more base. You'll notice the pink is disappearing a lot more slowly now. So I'm gonna slow down how quickly I put base in because I want it to get to the point where one drop of base will make it stay a light pink. So you'll notice I'm really getting close now. So I'm gonna add one drop. And notice that very, very, very light pink. That means that I am at the equivalence point, the point where the acid and the base are equal to one another. Uh, the concentrate, the moles of acid and the moles of base are equal to one another. So that's the end point because the color change of the phenolphthalein has uh, occurred. And so now we just want to read what the volume is. So again, I'm not going to read any more volumes for you. You want to read from the bottom of the meniscus and record your data. Remember, two decimal places, two decimal places for this. So that is our first trial. We're going to do two more trials and then um, that will be it. You'll be doing your calculations. So I am going to go ahead and stop this and set up the next trial uh, and, and you will um, see that one occur. Um, and this time we don't have to reset the burette because that only took about 18 milliliters roughly. Again, you have to calculate the exact amount, but it took roughly 18 milliliters. If you look down at the bottom of the burette, it goes down to 50. So we've got plenty of volume left in the burette in order to uh, do a second trial. So this is now going to be the initial volume for our second trial. So go ahead and record that as the initial volume of the sodium hydroxide um, for our second trial. And then we will let the sodium hydroxide run out, neutralize the acid, and then we'll take the final reading. So let's go ahead and get started with our second trial. So again, we're gonna use the stopcock in order to release sodium hydroxide in. And uh, we're gonna run this pretty fast, just like last time. Now this time I know it's gonna be around 36-ish, 35, 34, 36, somewhere in there. So I'm going to run it fast until I get to around 34 on the burette because I know that's where the end is going to be. So here you can see it's running down and we're almost to 34. So I'm going to stop there. You'll notice it's still acidic. So we still haven't reached the end point or the equivalence point. So now I'm going to start going a little bit more slowly. I'm just going to turn this very slightly see that it's going to come out drop by drop and we want to get to where one drop of the base will reach the end point so now one drop and you can see the pink disappears very slowly one drop oops I did two drops but luckily that worked out here's a drop here's another drop another drop all right looks like we're really close so now I'm really gonna take my time adding one drop at a time to reach that end point where one drop will make it change light pink. Here's another drop. Oh, we're so close. Okay, here's another one. Okay, I bet one more drop is going to do it. It went so slowly that time. So here's our last drop probably. And you can see that one drop May it turn pink. Notice it's a lot darker pink this time. That means we were so close to the edge of the end point that that one drop was enough to really kick it over into the base range. 
um, which is just fine. Uh, typically, you want to use a, a, a titrant that would give you a little finer resolution. In other words, one drop would contain a little less space so that it would uh, one drop would get right exactly on the endpoint. Um, this one, one drop went a little bit past, and that's okay. So let's record um, the volume. And so you can see, let's get it leveled here. You can see that, let me, actually, let me raise this for you so that it's not being blocked by the burette clamp. All right, so you'll be able to read it a little bit better. So there is our final reading. Get around here. And again, you'll want to record to two decimal places the final burette reading for trial two. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and set up our third trial. Oh, actually, before I do, I just wanted to show you, if I add more bass, watch how pink this gets. So you can see, if you go into the bass range, you add way more bass than the equivalence point. Now we're very basic, and it's very, very pink, uh, the phenol failing, but we don't care about that. All right, so I am gonna have to refill the burette this time, because I do not have around 18 milliliters left in the burette. So I will set that up, and then we'll do trial three. set up for trial three and uh, one thing I didn't mention about the volumetric pipette is that it is 10 milliliters to two decimal places that line actually is accurate uh, precise to two decimal places so each trial is using 10.00 milliliters of uh, the vinegar um, so make sure that you're recording to two decimal places two zeros all right so we've set up our third trial I'm gonna go ahead and show you where the uh, burette is and so again you need to read this to two decimal places remember if the second decimal place or the first decimal place is a zero make sure you put those zeros um, don't don't forget the zeros you need to go to two decimal places so go ahead and record your initial reading here for the burette and now we're gonna run our third trial so again I'm gonna go ahead and use the stopcock in order to allow it to run pretty fast um, we're at you know, roughly at 24, and 24 plus 18 would be 42. So I'm gonna run this pretty fast until I get around 41 milliliters on the burette, because I know it's gonna take roughly 18 milliliters. So I'm gonna get to 41. So you'll notice the color is developing pretty fast. I mean, uh, pretty slowly, sorry. So I keep running this again, it's full open. I am getting, uh, it's going down see the volume oops there you go you can see the volume going down and I'm gonna stop when I get to about 41 40 and a half roughly all right so now you'll see it's still clear but if I add one drop you can see the color disappears pretty pretty slowly meaning we're very close to the end point so I'm gonna add uh, each drop kind of slowly at this point so that I get to the point where one drop is going to change. And I went too far. That's exactly a horrible trial. So we're gonna have to do another trial and throw this data out. So you'll need to erase your data for this one because that was a bad trial and we'll need to do it again because I added a couple of drops extra there. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop this and we're gonna do on the experience of making a mistake because in titration there's always almost uh, mistakes almost always mistakes because uh, it's it's tough to get it exact you know I kind of lucked out with the first two getting um, getting it so close so here is our initial reading remember you need to erase the initial reading from the last trial since we threw that one out since it didn't go well um, so write down this new initial reading remember two decimal places and let's go ahead and run this trial so I'm going to go ahead and do this one. I'm probably going to do this one a little more slowly than I did the last one since I messed the last one up. So you can see uh, the base is running in. The titrant is running into the analyte. Remember, the titrant is our standard solution. It's the sodium hydroxide. We know the concentration of it. It's 0 0.500 molar sodium hydroxide. So the pink is starting to dissipate a little more slowly, so I know I'm starting to get close to the end point. 
and I am gonna go ahead and slow it down now and start going in one drop at a time so that I don't overshoot the end point this time. Because we want it to where one drop makes it stay pink. So there's one drop. Oh, nope. So we're getting close. I don't want to have to run another trial, so I'm going to do this one a lot more slowly than last time. Again, notice that pink dissipating much more slowly. Probably two more drops. One, two. Nope. Still need just a little bit more. So let's go ahead and do our last. We're still going, we're still doing drop at a time. You'll notice that the uh, dissipation of the pink is a little more slow. Let's go. Ah, we're getting so close. This is where patience is required. I was way off on the two drops earlier. Okay, there we go. One drop caused that. So we are ready to record our final trial, final volume. So you can see the volume right there. You need to record, let me get it so it's level. There you go. Record that final volume and that's it. Those are our three trials for our titration. Um, that was a beautiful one because we got it right, right on the end point. So good luck with the calculations and obviously if you need any help, please ask. Good luck. Thank you.